Hello everyone, welcome to fifth part of Rogue DPS Guide, which is gonna be the last one in this expansion. We're gonna end this by going through tips for last five Dragon Soul encounters. Starting with Hagara, let's focus on transitions first. In Lightning phase, other than taking part in Lightning Conduit, Rogue should remember about Cloak of Shadows, which can reset stacking debuff. Look at your health bar, and when you are dangerous close to dying, use it without hesitation. If your health is fine, however, don't bother and keep it for possible other oh shit moments. In Frost phase, you should really watch Frostflake debuff. Rogues can dispel it with Cloak of Shadows, Vanish or even improve Sprint, so we might do it prematurely by accident. You don't want to leave Frostpath beneath your entire raid, so be careful and leave dispelling to healers. Other than that, remember to approach Hagara as soon as her immunity shield is gone, so you maximize your DPS uptime. Have your slice and dice running, so you don't have to bother with it during stun. Obviously, this applies to both transition phases. In first one, refresh your slice and dice of last crystal, and in lightning phase of elemental, when he's about to die. What about regular phase? As combat, you want a blade flower tombs, as assassination, fan of knives them, as subtlety, just stick to the boss. Other than that, make use of smoke bomb. Gather your raid together and pop it ideally after third or fourth Iceland's hit. This allows your raid to skip this ability entirely. On Ultraxion, rogues offer great utility. Cloak of Shadows mitigates Hour of Twilight damage completely, and because of 2 minutes cooldown, it syncs perfectly with Looming Darkness debuff, so definitely use it. On top of that, Faint reduces damage taken throughout whole fight, so whenever your energy is low, squeeze in Faint and help your healers. Other than that, remember to use Heroic Will as late as possible in order to maximize your DPS time. Don't risk it too much though, dead DPSer is 0 DPS. Blackhorn Encounter is definitely combat rogue friendly due to Blade Flurry, so you definitely wanna play this spec here. Obviously, the first goal here is to maximize cleave damage, so make sure that you are in range of both targets all the time and your Blade Flurry is actually enabled. Remember to prioritize drakes when they are down. Faint reduces damage taken of big and small barrages, as well as charges and melee mob cleaves, so use it whenever you feel it's getting hot around you. Keep in mind that with faint up and almost full HP, you can easily soak small barrages by yourself, but to be honest, it's not that important, unless you run melee heavy setup and you are short on range soakers. In phase 2, focus drake, but at the same time cliff boss. Without AIDS fire, it's gonna be very easy. Yet again, fate comes handy here. If your HP or energy is low, pop your faint before boss AoE shout. This is very helpful, especially in the end when boss HP is low and his AoE damage gets dangerously high. On Spine of Deathwing, it's recommended to spec into subtlety because of the best possible burst within 20 seconds window, which is important for burning tendons. Fight itself for DPSers is extremely easy, so apart from having flawless burst time, there is almost nothing that can screw you over. Therefore, I'm gonna focus on proper handling of burst phase, so here we go. When Amalgamation is about to die, ensure that you have 5 combo points ready, and then as soon as Mob's HP reaches 0 and he begins casting Explosion, pop 5 combo points, recuperate. 1 second into cast, pop your Cloak of Shadows and then squeeze in 2 hemorrhages. Them combined with Honor Among Thieves will grant you 4 or 5 combo points, which is enough. On top of that, during the cast, use Shadow Step for bigger ambush opening on tendons. When Mob is almost done casting and he's about to disappear, pop Slice and Dice. There we go, recuperate and Slice and Dice is rolling, so all you have to do is ambush, step backstab and eviscerate. Open with Ambush plus Premeditation and then alternate Eviscarates and Ambushes until Shadow Dance is over. As you can see I stick to 4 combo points Eviscarates only during Shadow Dance. Then go with Backstabs and 5 combo points Eviscarates until phase is over. If you are providing Bleed debuff, open with Ambush without Premeditation and then pop Emorrhage. The rest is the same. Double Wound Poison is better DPS wise in such short DPS window. Other than that, use faint while dealing with amalgamations to reduce damage taken. Despite length of Madness of Deathwing Encounter, there is not much to say here because fight itself is a huge letdown. Blistering tentacles are immune to cliffs and all kind of AoE effects, but it doesn't mean that you can't make use of Blade Flurry. 
In order to benefit from it, we need to target Blistering Tentacle and then cleave its damage onto Deathwing's Tentacle, not the other way around. Cloak of Shadows mitigates bolt explosion damage completely so make use of it on 4th platform. On top of that, Faint reduces most of the damage taken so whenever your HP is low, don't hesitate to use it. In Phase 2, it is important to have at least one row with Crippling Poison put on Throne Weapon to slow bloods. The best initial slow is still Hunter's Trap though, but even so try to approach them ASAP and start fucking immediately. Overall, Spell with Prog is present throughout whole fight, but I don't think there is one conclusive answer of its best usage for each spec. I personally believe that rogues in Phase 1 should focus single target DPS and cleave off to Parasites via Blade Flurry if they are put next to Corruption. Other than that, and trick with Blistering Tentacles as combat, it should be down to single target DPS only. In Phase 2, however, Fan of Knives is reasonable choice for Blasts in all specs, not only because of Creeping Poison, but also the fact that they need to die ASAP, so every second matters. In addition to it, if your Adrenaline Rush is up during Fan of Knives spam, enable your Blade Flurry as combat to proc in another spell with. But remember to do it only if you are energy capped anyway, otherwise it's gonna be lost due to lower energy region and therefore less fox. So yeah, that's it for now. In Mist of Pandaria our goal is to release these guides more frequently and more importantly much sooner, so keep your eyes open shortly after progression is over. See you then and remember to subscribe.